In this demonstration, we're going to cover the post frame design process in Chief Architect. We're going to apply this design process towards creating a simple pole barn building, but the tools and techniques used in this demonstration can be applied towards creating a variety of post frame structures. Before watching this demonstration, it is recommended to have reviewed the quick start video playlist and be familiar with how the framing features work in Chief Architect. There are two approaches for post frame design in Chief Architect. The first approach is just to use the manual framing tools, and the second approach is to use a combination of both the manual and automatic framing tools. This demonstration is going to use the second approach, but if you're interested in learning more about the first approach, which is just using the manual framing tools, there's a how-to article on the website with more information. We're going to begin by adjusting the program defaults to be optimized for post-frame design. We will then draw out our initial floor plan. We'll adjust the room type and take a look at some of the structural settings. We'll adjust our roofs. We'll be adjusting our framing for both our walls and roofs throughout the demonstration. And we'll conclude the demonstration by placing footings. The first thing we're going to do is adjust our default settings to be optimized for post-frame design. So to optimize our default settings, I'm going to go up to Edit and then Default Settings. The first thing we're going to adjust here is how our exterior wall tool works. So I'm going to go down to the wall tools and then double click on exterior wall. This pops up the exterior wall defaults and there's different categories of things about the exterior wall defaults you can adjust on the left. You can make your adjustments in the middle and then on the right hand side you can see a preview as to what those adjustments will look like. We're going to adjust our exterior wall type. So I'm going to go down to the wall types panel and you can see that we're using a siding six wall type and I'm going to click on define which allows us to change how this wall is built. If we take a look at this siding six wall type you can see that it has drywall, it's using a two by six for its framing and it has other exterior wall layers traditionally used for stick frame design. We're going to create a copy of this wall type and modify it specifically for post frame design. So I'm going to click on the copy button and then I'm going to give this copy a new name. I'm going to call it post frame six, indicating that we're using a six by six post. And I'm going to give it a, the last word of vertical, indicating that we're going to be using vertical siding. Next, we can go through these wall layers and modify them to our specifications. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this drywall layer. You might opt to include this as an upsell opportunity for the project, but for this design, we're going to go ahead and delete it. The next thing we need to do is we need to modify our main framing layer so that we have six by six post. You can see that we're using a fur framing material, but we want this to be a pressure treated material. So I'm going to double click on where it says fur framing, and this will open up the library browser and allow us to use a different material. I'm going to come into the core catalogs and under the framing folder, select the pressure treated lumber and click on OK. And you can see that we're now using a pressure treated material. We need to adjust this to be a six by six post. You can see that my thickness is five and a half inches. And then the next thing that I need to adjust is the width. So I'm going to adjust this to five and a half inches. The next thing we're going to do is remove the plates from on top and on bottom. And then we're also going to adjust the spacing of these posts so that they're 96 inches on center. Our post layer is looking good, but the next thing I want to do is add a layer for our horizontal girts, like you can see in the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy of this pressure treated post layer by clicking on the insert above button. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this copy up into the exterior layers by clicking on the move up button. And then I'm going to adjust its material so that instead of using a pressure treated material, it's using a fur framing material like we previously had. Next, I know that I'm going to be using two by sixes for these skirts, so let's adjust the size of them by adjusting the thickness to one and a half inches. And then I'm going to press on tab to accept that input. And then with that layer still selected, down below you can see that the width is already at five and a half inches. While we're down here, we're going to check this box that says horizontal framing, which will run these horizontally to act as skirts. Additionally, while we're down here, we're going to adjust the spacing of them to be every 24 inches on center. Off to the right, if you look at the preview as to how it will look in the floor plan, you can see that our girts will be displayed as this gray fill layer. 
Let's go ahead and adjust this by clicking on the layer and clicking on the fill option. And then under the type, we're just going to adjust it to have no pattern and then click on OK. And you can see how that will look in the plan. Moving up the layers for the wall, we're going to delete the OSB layer. We're also going to delete the house wrap layer. And then we're going to adjust the siding so that instead of using a horizontal blue siding material, we're going to be using a vertical running red siding material by double clicking on the lap siding. And then I'm going to scroll down to our manufacturer folders. And then you can see that Chief Architect partners with a lot of manufacturers. And I'm just going to go down to James Hardy and navigate through the folder hierarchy until I find a material that I would like to use. So with our red siding material selected, I'm going to click on OK. And then from here, you can adjust the thickness or the fill if you wanted to. But once you're happy with how this wall is configured, you can go ahead and click on OK. And you can see the 3D preview as to how it's going to look. And you'll notice that there's an option here for pony wall. If you wanted to add a lower pony wall, you can do so here, and you could click on Define to customize how it looks. For this plan, we're okay with not having a pony wall, but this might be an option to consider as an upsell opportunity. With the exterior wall defaults dialed in, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And then the next default setting we're going to adjust is to our perspective framing overview camera. So I'm going to go up to our camera tools, and I'm going to double click on Perspective Framing Overview. And I'm going to change it from using the standard rendering technique to using the vector view rendering technique. I just find that when working with framing, it's a little bit easier to edit objects using this rendering technique. And then I'm going to click on OK and then click on Done. And then the last adjustment we're going to make is we're going to re remove this background grid that you can see here. I just find it a little bit easier to draft without this present. So I can remove this just by selecting this option in the toolbar on the right hand side. And with those few settings configured, we're ready to draw out our floor plan. So I'm going to go up to our wall tools. And I'm going to select the straight exterior wall. And then I'm just going to come in and click and drag until I draw four walls that are connecting. Once we connect the four walls to form a room, we'll get automatic dimensions that appear that generate from the framing layer to the framing layer. We can use these dimensions to resize the structure. I know that this wall at the top is currently 22 feet 10 inches, but if I wanted to resize it to 32 feet, either the wall on the left or the wall on the right is going to have to adjust its position. So I'm going to select the wall on the right, and then I'm going to select the dimension type in my new desired value and press enter, and you can see how that updates. I'm going to do the same thing with the wall on the right. You can see that it's currently 24 feet and 10 inches. So I'm going to select the wall that I want to move, select the dimension, type in my new value and press enter, and now we've redimensioned our space. Next, let's take a 3D view. We can do so by going up to our camera tools at the top of the screen, and there's a couple of different camera options. The full camera is like a first person point of view. The perspective full overview is like a bird's eye view of the model. The perspective floor overview is similar to the full overview, except for the floor overview intentionally has the roof and ceiling removed so that you can look down into the design. And then there's the perspective framing overview, which in the default settings we adjusted to be using the vector view rendering technique. For the moment, let's go ahead and open the perspective floor overview. You can see that it instantly generates a 3D view, and using the left button on your mouse, you can navigate around the design. Using the scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out, and by clicking and holding the scroll wheel, you can pan back and forth. You can see that at the moment, our design has our red exterior siding material, and then it has our framing layers, but they look a little bit unusual. The reason this framing layer looks unusual is because we haven't told the program we are ready to generate our individual framing members, so the program is just filling this space with the framing material. But we can build our individual framing members at any time by going up to Build, Framing, and then Build Framing. For now, we're only going to build our wall framing, so I'm going to go to Wall, and then I'm going to check the box that says Build Wall Framing, and then I'll also check this option that says automatically build wall framing. So at any time we make an adjustment into the plan, the wall framing regenerates. With that, I'm going to click on OK. 
and we're going to get some message asking if we want to see the layers for the wall framing. I'm going to go ahead and click on yes to these messages and then the last thing I'm going to do is rebuild the 3D view by going up to 3D, rebuild 3D, and you can see how with that adjustment we can now see those posts and those horizontal girts. If we zoom in a little bit you'll notice that we have a wood flooring, a room molding, and an OSB under the flooring. And for this post frame design all we need is a concrete slab. So let's go ahead and adjust this and we'll also increase the height of the room to be a little bit more appropriate. So I'm going to press spacebar and then I'm going to click once in the room and then in the bottom left hand corner there's different ways you can interact with this room. I'm going to go ahead and click on the option that says open object. This will open up our room specification and on the right hand side you can see a graphic of how this room is coming together. If we zoom in close in the graphic, you can see that this room type is currently using an eye joist, the OSB layer, the wood flooring, and then the molding material. We can change the room type from being an unspecified room type to being a slab room type and watch what happens once I confirm that change. You can see that the room updates and that's because in the default settings the slab room type has a 4 inch concrete slab configured and it doesn't have a molding or any of those other properties configured. Next you can see that we have dimensions indicating our room heights. If we jump down to the structure panel on the left hand side, here you can see our rough ceiling height, our finished ceiling height, and then other options for controlling the ceiling. For this design, we're not going to have a ceiling with drywall on the top of it, so I'm just going to uncheck this option that says flat ceiling over this room. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust our rough ceiling to be 12 feet, and then if we look down below where it says floor structure and we click on edit, you can see that we have a concrete material that's 4 inches thick for the floor structure. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK to this, and then I'm going to click on OK to accept these changes to the plan. And you can see in the 3D view how that updates. We now have that concrete material. Our posts are going to be 12 feet tall. And you can see that we have a room label. If you want to change this room label to display something else, you can double click in the room. And under the room name, you can adjust this to be whatever you need it to be. Let's go ahead and close our perspective floor overview camera. And instead, we're going to open a perspective full overview, which will include our roof. You can see that the current roof style used in the design is a hip roof style, but we can change this to be a gable roof style on the two end walls by pressing spacebar, selecting the wall, and then in the bottom toolbar, there's an option that says change to gable wall. And when we select this, you can see that our roof system will update with the auto rebuild roofs feature turned on. You can make sure this feature is turned on by going to Build, Roof, Build Roof, and making sure the Auto Rebuild Roofs Checks box is selected. Additionally, there's a lot of other things you can adjust about your roof. You can adjust other options for how the eaves should behave. You can change structural information about how it should frame, and we'll take a look at this a little bit later on. You can adjust rafter tails, the ridge caps, and so forth. There's a lot of automatic roof styles that the program can build and you can learn more here by, and by clicking on these individual roof styles. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this and then rotate to the back of the design and then change this to a gable wall as well by selecting the wall and then selecting the gable roof button in the bottom toolbar. So that's going to be all the work that we do on the roof system for now. I'm going to close this 3D view and then the next thing I want to do is I want to clean up our floor plan view you can see that we have those dashed lines where our roof planes are running, we have dimensions, we have a room label, and as we continue working on the design, we're going to see more and more information displayed on our screen. At any point we can turn on or off the display of these items by turning on or off the layer. To adjust the layer, open the active layer display options towards the top right hand corner of the screen, and then select the object, and then just uncheck the display of that object. So I did that for the dimensions. I'm going to do that for the roof planes as well. And then I'm also going to do it for our room label. And just by taking a few seconds there, we quickly cleaned up our view. Next, let's take a look at our framing. To see our framing, I'm going to switch our plan view from the working plan view to the framing floor plan view. 
This will adjust our layer set and turn on and off the display of what we see on our screen. You can see in our framing floor plan view that we have dimensions associated with framing and we can see our posts. Recall earlier that we specified our on-center post spacing to be no more than 96 inches. If we zoom in close, you can see where those posts are located, and if we go up to our dimension tools and then select the tape measure tool, we can measure how far apart these posts are spaced from one another. You can see that this one is almost 8 feet, but if we measure the distance between these two posts on this horizontal running wall, you can see that it could be better. We can help the program with the framing spacing by using a framing reference marker. To use a framing reference marker, go up to your framing tools and go down to framing reference marker and then place it on the outside layer of your post. This will help the program recognize where it should start the rollout of the post. Now if we go back to our dimension tools and we select the tape measure tool, let's go ahead and measure from the center of this post to the end of this post you can see that our posts are more appropriately spaced. Next, let's go ahead and place a man door towards the front of the design and adjust some of the properties of it. So I'm going to zoom out slightly and refocus my screen to be zoomed in on this area. Next, to place a door, I'm going to go up to my door tools and I'm going to select the hinge door and I'm going to come in and click once to place it in the plan. The program is going to ask if we want to see the layer of the door displayed and for now let's go ahead and click on yes. You can see that when we did that, with our automatic rebuild framing turned on, we had some trimmers and other pieces of framing come in. And if we take a 3D view and we select the perspective framing overview, you can see how this is coming into the design. If we wanted to see the display of this door in this framing overview, we can open up the active layer display options, come down to the door layer, and check that we want to see it displayed. Let's go ahead and scroll down our layers until we're looking at the window layer because we'll later be adding some windows. Next, you'll notice that this door has some panels and they have a gray line style. The reason for this is because the layer for the doors is set to have a gray line style. Let's go ahead and adjust this so it has a black line style, just like the framing members do. So to adjust this, in the active layer display options, I'm going to come down to where we have some empty space and I'm going to right click and then I'm going to select the option that says Layer Edit Buttons. This will give us more control over the layers, and I'm going to click the button that says Select All, and then underneath the color, I'm going to go ahead and change it to be a black color. Click OK, and now you can see more detail about that door in the 3D view. If you do not see your doors or windows displayed, there might be a special 3D setting that you have to make sure you have enabled. To enable this setting, go up to your default settings, Go to 3D View Defaults, select 3D Views, and make sure you have this option for display openings independent of walls and roofs checked. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this and then click on Done. The next thing I'm going to do if we take a look at the photo of the final design is I'm going to change the door style to be a slab door and then I'm also going to change the casing on the inside so that we do not have an interior casing. So to make these adjustments to the door, I'm just going to double click on the door to open up its specification. Under where it says door style, I'm going to select from the drop down and click on slab. Next, to remove the interior casing, I'm going to go to the casings panel and I'm going to uncheck the box that says use interior casing and then I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. You can see how that made that adjustment and if we swing our view around so that we're looking at the door from the inside, the door is going to have a jam and we can turn on the display of the jam by turning on the display of the casing layer since that's where the jam resides. So I can just select the door and turn on the casing layer. Next, I'm going to go ahead and close the active layer display options. And then what I want next is I want the jam of the door to be snug up against the framing. So let's go ahead and adjust the rough opening. So I'm going to double click on the door. And the first thing I need to do is I need to recognize the thickness of the jam. So I'm going to go down to the jam panel and I'm just going to take a quick look and copy the value of three quarters of an inch. Next, we need our rough opening to start at that value. So I'm going to go down to the rough opening panel and then on each side, I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. I'll enter it in for the top and then I'll go ahead and remove it for the bottom and then click on OK. 
and you can see how that door is now snug up against our framing and we'll come back and manually adjust our framing here in a little bit. Next, let's go ahead and place a garage door at the front of the design. So I'm going to go back to the floor plan view, zoom out a little bit, and then go up to the door tools, select the garage door, and come over to the wall and click once to place it. I'm going to jump back into the 3D view and then navigate our view set we're looking at that garage door. Again, I want to make some adjustments to this garage door, so I'm going to press spacebar, double click on the garage door, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the width of this door to be 16 feet and then the height of it to be 10 feet. Next, I'm going to make that same adjustment to the jam for the garage door, just like we did on the man door. So I'm going to go over to the jam panel, recognize that it's three quarters of an inch, and then go to the rough opening, and then paste that in for the side, the top, and then remove it for the bottom. Before I click on OK, I'm going to go to the framing panel right here, and I'm just going to remove one of these trimmers. I'm going to make sure that our trimmer count is one, and then click on OK. And now we have that garage door started. We'll come back and finalize the framing here in a little bit. But for the next part of the design, I want to add a window into the other wall. So to do this, I'm going to go up to our floor plan view, go over to our window tools, and then come in and I place the window about where I want to place it. And I'm going to select yes, I want to see the display of this layer. And you can see how the window comes in and there's some automatic framing that generates with it. And if we jump back to the 3D view, and then we navigate around so that we're taking a look at this window. There's definitely some things about this window that I want to adjust. So I'm going to press spacebar and double click on the window to open up its specification. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the window type to be a fixed glass window. And then I'm going to adjust the width to be 36 inches. Next, I'm going to go down to the casings panel and remove the interior casing. And then I'm going to go down to the sill panel and remove the interior and exterior sill, and then click on OK. You can see how that got the window started, but one thing you'll notice about the window is that its frame is large and it is extending through the post layer. What I really want is I want our frame to be rather slim and just resides in the skirts layer. So let's go ahead and adjust our frame and our sash so that the window is residing within the skirts layer. It's gonna be a little bit easier to recognize what's going on through a back clip cross section view. So to get into a back clip cross section view, I'm going to go up to our floor plan view, select our elevation tools, select the back clip cross section option, and then zoom in and just click and drag a small clip going through the middle of the window. You can see how that's coming in. And what I want to do is I want to turn on the framing layers so that we can see where all the individual framing pieces are residing. So I'm going to go up to our active layer display options. And I'm going to come down to where the framing layers start, select the framing layer at the top of the list, and then scroll down, and then hold shift, and select the framing layer at the bottom of the list, and then check the display. And you can see how those framing layers turn on in the cross-section view. And then I'm going to close the active layer display option. Let's go ahead and pull this view so that it's side by side with our 3D view. And now that it's easier to look at the window and look at our framing in the cross section view, the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to adjust the frame size so that instead of protruding the full wall length, it's just protruding the length of this skirt, which is an inch and a half. So I'm going to double click on the window, go down to the frame panel, and instead of the checkbox for fit frame to wall, I'm going to uncheck that and specify that its depth is an inch and a half and select enter on the keyboard. In the cross section view, you can now see how that frame is rather small, but we need the sash to be aligned with the frame. So let's go ahead and double click on the window to open up its specification. And we're going to go to the sash panel. And over where it says inset, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to zero inches. And when we click on OK, it's going to change the inset amount so that it's aligned with the frame. And then the last thing that we need to do is change the frame offset amount. So again, I'm going to double click on the window to open up its specification, go down to the frame panel, and under inset, I'm going to change this to be negative one and a half inches and click on OK. And you can now see how that window is aligned with the girt layer. 
The last thing I'm going to do is remove the rough opening space around the window. So I'm going to double click on the window, go to the rough opening panel, and on each side specify that there's going to be zero inches. Same thing for the top and the bottom, and then click on OK. And there we have that window updated. Next, I know I'm going to be placing other windows, so I'm going to select the window, click on the Set as Default button. That's going to give us a message saying that the program window defaults have been updated. So now whenever we place a window into the design, it will be based on this style and coming in on the Gertz layer. Let's go ahead and click on OK to this message, close out of our cross section view, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be working on the framing over on this side of the plan. And we'll also be moving the door so that its jam is up against this post. I picked this post specifically because it meets the 96 inch on center spacing with the post at the end of this wall. This will allow us to delete some of the extra framing members surrounding the door. When modifying framing, it can be easiest to do this type of work in a cross section framing view. So let's get into one of these views by going up to our floor plan, selecting the elevation views, selecting the back clipped cross section, and then just starting our camera outside of the wall and then have it going to the inside. You can see when we get into the view, it creates a cross section through this side of the model. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom layer set just to see our wall framing, our doors, and our windows. So to create this layer set, I'm gonna open up the active layer display options and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a copy of our existing layer set by selecting the copy set button and then giving it a desired name. Next, we're going to temporarily turn off the display of all the layers and then we'll turn back on only the framing layers. So I'm going to click in here and select all layers and then turn off all the layers. And then I'm going to scroll down to the framing layers select the framing layer at the top of the list and then scroll down hold shift and select the framing layer at the bottom of the list and then check the display next i'm going to make sure that we have the display of the doors turned on and then i'm also going to make sure that we have the display of the windows turned on next i'm going to go ahead and close the active layer display options and we're ready to make modifications to the wall framing the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete some of the unnecessary wall framing members that we don't need. So I'm going to select on this header and press on the delete button. Now, by manually making a modification to our framing, we're going to be turning off the automatic rebuild framing function. This question is asking us if we want to proceed with doing this, and I'm going to click on yes, and then proceed to delete a few other framing members that we don't need. So I've deleted a couple of framing members, and what I want to do next is I want to measure the distance from the inside of this trimmer to the post, because we're going to be moving the door that distance. So I'm going to go back up to our framing floor plan view and switch our focus so that we're looking at the door. Next, there's a couple ways that you can measure the distance between these objects, and how I'm going to do it is I'm going to draw a CAD line, open up the CAD line, and copy the, the length of it, and then move the door that value. So I'm going to go up to the CAD line tool and then just click and draw a CAD line going from one object to the other. Double click on the CAD line to open it up. And then you can see that that line is currently a little bit over 35 inches. I'm going to highlight it and press Control C to copy it. And then I can cancel out of here and delete the CAD line. Next, I'm going to go back to our cross section view. And at this point, I can go ahead and delete this trimmer. And then I'm going to select the door and then I'm going to move it. And as I'm moving it, I'm going to press tab on the keyboard. And this will allow us to enter in a value of how far we want to move it. And I'm going to press control V to paste in that value we copied from the CAD line and click on OK. And you can see that we now have that door in position where we want against that post. I'm going to move this trimmer as well by selecting it, moving it, and then pressing tab. And then again, pressing Control V to enter in the value of how far we're going to move it. Next, you can see that we need to adjust these girds. This is really easy to adjust. We can simply select them and drag them so that they're coming onto the inside of the trimmer. And then we'll do the same thing for the other side of the door. If 
If we take a look at a photo of the final wall framing elevation, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this trimmer on the right hand side of the door and we're going to increase its length by five and a half inches and then place a girt going from the end of the wall to this post. So I'm going to select this trimmer and I'm going to select the handle at the top and drag it up and as I'm dragging I'm going to press tab and specify that I want to bring it out another five and a half inches and press enter on my keyboard. Next, I'm going to create a copy of this girt and move it up so that it's at the top of the trimmer. So I'm going to select the girt and select copy, paste in place. With that girt still selected, I'm going to select the point to point move tool and I'm going to select the first point on the girt and then select where I want to move it up to the trimmer. And then I'm just going to extend it across so it's going from the post and then make sure it's in the appropriate spot on the other post. Next, I know that this post is a six by six, which might be a bit excessive for this situation. So let's go ahead and change it to be a four by four by double clicking on it to open up its specification. And here we're gonna change the width and the thickness to three and a half inches and click on okay. You'll notice that when we adjusted the size of our post, it's now no longer flush up against our door jam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in close and we're going to again use the point to point move tool and select that we're going to move it so that it's up against this trimmer and there it'll be aligned with the door jam. So with the post selected, I'm going to use the point to point move tool, select the first point on it, select that we're going to be moving it to the second point, and there we have the post in at the correct position again. If we take a look at a photo of the final design, the next thing I want to do is I want to get our bottom girt to be a pressure treated material. To make this adjustment, I'm going to go up to the Material Eyedropper tool, select the pressure treated material off the post, and then making sure I'm in component mode, I'm just going to click on these bottom girts to change them to the pressure treated material. The next change I want to make to this bottom girt is that instead of it being a 2x6, I want it to be a 2x8. So I'm going to press space bar and then select our first girt, hold control, select the second girt, and then open up their specification. And then under the thickness value, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to seven and a quarter, and then click on okay. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that these girts on the bottom are starting at the same elevation as our concrete floor. So to turn on the display of the concrete floor, I'm gonna go up to our display options button, and I'm gonna scroll down until we find the layer for floor surfaces and then just check that I want to see it and click on OK. And you can now see where that concrete is. Now I need to measure the distance between the bottom of the skirt and the bottom of the floor surface. And to me, the easiest way to do this is in a CAD detail from this view. So I'm going to go up to the CAD menu, select CAD detail from view. And what this is going to do is it's going to take our model and it's going to convert it into a series of 2D CAD lines. Next, I know I just need to measure the distance between the bottom of the girt and the bottom of the floor surface. And again, I'm just going to do this how I did earlier by selecting the CAD line, drawing a small CAD line, double clicking on it to open up its specification, and then copy that value, which is 3 eighths of an inch. And then I can close out of this CAD detail. And then back in the plan, I'm just going to select both of these girts. And then in the bottom toolbar, there's an option here that says open transform replicate object. And we're just going to specify that we're going to move them and we're going to move them in the Z Delta so that they go down and we're just going to type in a negative three eighths of an inch and then click on okay. And now we have those bottom girts in the correct position. Next, if we open up our active layer display options and we select on one of these posts, you can see that it comes in on the framing wall layer. If we select on this post next to the door, you can see that it also comes in on the framing wall layer. And if we select on the girt, it also comes in on the framing wall layer. I like to have these different framing members differentiated within the layer system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a individual layers for the girts and the door trimmer, which is acting as a post. So I'm going to go up to the framing wall layer in the active layer display options, select it, select copy, and you can see that it comes in on the layer framing wall too. If I just double click in here, 
I can start typing and I'm just going to name this layer framing wall girts. And then I'm also going to create another copy and then call this one framing wall trimmers. And then I'm going to change these objects onto these layers. So holding control, I'm going to select all of the girts. I'm going to open up their specification and under the line style panel, I'm going to switch them from being on the framing wall layer to the being on the framing wall girts layer and then click on OK. I'm also going to make a similar change to this trimmer. I'm going to double click on it and change its layer to the framing trimmers layer. And that's going to complete all the work that we're going to do on this wall for the time being. So with that, I'm going to close the active layer display options, zoom out a little bit, and I want to save this camera so that we can reopen it and continue working on it. So I'm going to go up to the Save Active View button, click that, and then I'm going to click on the Edit Active View button. And then from here, I'm just going to go ahead and name this cross section E1 West Wall. And then click on OK. And with that, I can go ahead and close this camera. And then if we zoom out in the floor plan view, and we come over to the active layer display options, and then under the camera layer, there's a layer that says cameras cross section. I'm going to go ahead and check the display of that. And now if we ever wanted to open up that camera again, we can just double click on the call out. Next, for the other three sides of the design, I'm going to create the other cross section cameras modify the bottom girts, and place the girts and trimmers on their own framing layers. I've gone ahead and created the remaining cross-section cameras and changed their layer set to the section view framing layer set. Additionally, I've taken the girts and the door trimmers in the plan and I've changed their layer to those new layers we created for them. I've also taken the bottom girt on each side of the design and change it to match the properties of the girt on the west side of the design. And then I also took the posts that previously extended up through the attic wall, deleted them, and replaced them with posts that stop at the 12 foot rough ceiling height. Next, I'm going to turn off the automatic rebuild attic walls feature by going up to the default settings, going down to walls, and then double clicking on general wall, and then unchecking the box that says auto rebuild attic walls. By making this change, the attic walls and their girts will remain exactly how they are right now. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and then click on Done. For the next part of the design, we're going to modify the framing surrounding the garage door. So let's go ahead and in our 3D view, navigate so that we're viewing the garage door from the inside. And we're going to start by deleting these extra cripples that generate over the garage. So I'm just going to select them and delete them one at a time. Next, if we look at that photo of the garage framing elevation, you can see that we have two by sixes as the trimmers on either side of the garage door. So let's make this adjustment next. So these trimmers are currently five and a half inches wide and they only need to be one and a half inches wide. So we can change your width by four inches. So I'm going to select the trimmer and on the handle on the right hand side, I'm going to select it and move it inwards. And as I'm moving, I'm going to press tab on my keyboard and then specify that I want to bring it four inches in, press enter on the keyboard. And there we have that trimmer starting to be in the same place. And then I'm just going to select the material eyedropper tool, select the material off the girt and apply it to the trimmer. And then on the other side of the garage door, I'm going to select the trimmer, delete it, and then select the trimmer that we just adjusted, press copy, reflect about, and reflect it about the garage door. Next, I want to take these headers that are over the garage door and adjust the ends of them so that they're residing over these trimmers. And this might be easiest to do in the framing elevation view. So I'm going to go back to the floor plan view and double click on that cross section camera I had previously created and that'll open up the view and then I'm just going to select the header and drag the end of it back so that's residing over the trimmer and remember we have a double header condition here so I'm going to do that for the second header as well and then I'm going to do it on the other side.
Next, I want to adjust our framing over the garage door so that instead of having two headers, we have one header and we have one 2x6 running across the door jam and then the header will reside on top of that. Let's jump into the 3D view and let's rotate our view slightly and then I'm going to double click on the inside header and I'm going to change its width to be one and a half inches by five and a half inches and then I'm going to adjust the roll so that instead of being a header it's going to be a general framing member and then click on OK. You can see how that made that adjustment and next I need to adjust the material so that it matches that of the trimmers and the girts. So I'm going to use the adjust material eyedropper tool to select the material off the girt and then apply it to the general framing member. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust its elevation so that it is resting right on top of the trimmer and the door jam. And I'm going to do this in the elevation view. By first selecting this header and moving it up just a little bit, we can always adjust it back down when we need to. And then I'm going to select this skirt and temporarily drag it back so that we have some space to see our trimmer. And then I'm going to select the general framing member and then use the point to point move tool. Select our first point on it and then select where we're going to move it to. And there we have that in position. And then we're going to do the same thing with the header. We're going to select it and then use the point to point move tool and specify that we're just going to have it resting right on top of that general framing member. And then we can take our girt and adjust it back. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to jump back into our floor plan view and make sure everything is aligned properly. So I'm going to select on our floor plan view and then zoom into the garage door area. You can see that the general framing member needs adjusting. So I'm going to select it and adjust it so that it is five and a half inches wide matching the trimmers and posts. And if we go back to the 3D view, we can see that it is now in the correct position. The next thing we need to do is adjust the position of these posts so that they're right up against the door trimmers. So I'm going to zoom in, select the post, select the move handle, and then just move it in and press tab and specify that we're bringing it four inches in and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Our next framing adjustment, if we take a look at that garage framing elevation, is we're gonna have a girt running the length of the wall right above the garage door covering that general framing member that we just created. And this is gonna require us moving the existing girts down slightly, which will maintain our maximum on center spacing between our girts of 24 inches. So let's go ahead and jump back into the 3D view. And the first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the position of these two girts. So I'm gonna select the first one, hold control, and then select the second one, and then select the move handle, and then move it down. And as I'm moving, press tab, and specify that I wanna bring it down six inches. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a copy of this skirt at the top of the wall, and then bring that copy down so that it starts right at where that general framing member starts. This might be easiest to do in the elevation view. So I'm gonna jump into that view, and then I'm going to select the skirt at the top and then I'm going to select copy and then I'm going to go up and select the move handle to move our copy out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then use our point to point move tool, select a point on that girt and then move it down so that's covering our general framing member. The next thing I want to do is I just want to make sure that it is positioned appropriately at the end. Looks like we can bring it in a little bit right here. So I'm gonna select it and then just bring it in. And then we'll do another check on the other side. And we'll just bring that end out a little bit. And there we have all the girts in the correct position. And then the last thing you can do if you do not want to see the display of this header label is turn off the layer for it by selecting the header, opening up our active layer display options and then just turning off the display of our framing header labels. And that's gonna be all the work that we do on this wall. So let's go ahead and save our view and then close it. And then next, let's work on this window and the framing surrounding it. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I have this window centered on our door. So I'm gonna select the window and then select the center object tool in the bottom toolbar and then come over the door 
and then just click once to place it. Now, when I do that, you can see that our framing is in the incorrect position. We'll eventually be deleting this framing and adjusting the girt. However, it can be beneficial to rebuild our framing one more time, which will help us align our girts in a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the floor plan view, and then I'm going to zoom out, and I'm going to select the wall on the right hand side. And in the bottom toolbar, there's a button that says build framing for selected objects. When I click on this button, the program is going to rebuild the framing for only that wall that I had selected. And if we look in the 3D view, you can see how the framing is rebuilt, which will make it a little bit easier for us to modify our GERT framing here in a little bit. Next, I'm going to delete some of this framing surrounding the window by simply selecting it and then pressing the delete key on my keyboard. The next thing I want to do is I want to check what this post on center spacing is in regards to the post to the right and to the left of it. So I'm going to go back to the floor plan view and I'm going to focus my attention in on this post and then the post on either side of it. And I'm going to go up to our dimension tools and I'm going to select the manual dimension tool. And then I'm going to select the center of this post and click and drag a dimension going to the center of the other post. And then I'm going to move that dimension out a little bit. And then I'm also going to see where the string lands on the end. So I'm going to click on the diamond handle and drag it to the end. And you can see that we have a little bit of space to move this post around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the post. And when I click once there, you can see that I have the wall selected in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. But if I press tab on my keyboard, I can select other objects in that general vicinity. And so with that post selected, I'm going to change our on center spacing and press enter. And now you can see that looks a little bit more appropriate. And then I'm just going to select that dimension and delete it. Jumping back to the 3D view, the next thing I want to do is I want to adjust the position of the window so that the bottom of the window frame is resting on this girt. I can also delete this extra framing member that we don't need. So let's open up that framing cross section elevation of this wall and then see how we can move the window down. So I'm going to go back to the floor plan view, find that cross section framing camera and double click to open it up. The next thing I need to do is I need to measure the distance from the bottom of the frame to the skirt, and that can be easiest to do in a CAD detail from the view. So I'm going to go up to the CAD menu, select CAD detail from view, and then you can see where that line is for the bottom of the frame and for the top of that girt. And I'm just going to go up to the CAD line tool, draw a CAD line in between those two points, double click on it to open up its specification, and then just highlight the value and press Control C to copy the length of it. Cancel out of this. And then I can close this CAD detail from view. And then I'm going to double click on the window. And where it says floor to bottom, I'm going to press the subtract key on my keyboard. And then press Control V to paste in that value that we copied. And then click on OK. And you can see how this window is now in the correct position. I'm then going to press the set as default button in the bottom toolbar and now any future windows we'll add will come in at that height and based on these styling properties. Next, let's modify the girt surrounding the window so that it looks something like this in the photo. We're going to have a girt going along the top of the window from the post to the post and then we're also going to have a girt running vertically along this side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a girt running on top of the window so I'm going to select this skirt on the left hand side and select the copy button and then paste in place and then I'm going to move it out and as I'm moving I'm going to press tab on the keyboard and specify that I want to bring it out five and a half inches and then I'm going to make sure I have it running from post to post. And now that framing member is in the correct position and then the next thing we need to do is we need to get a girt running vertically along the side of the window. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some space for that girt. So to do that, I need to bring this skirt and this skirt back five and a half inches. So I'm going to select a girt and then select the move handle, bring it back. And as I'm moving it, press tab and specify that I want to bring it back five and a half inches. And then I'll do the same thing for that other girt. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy of the skirt that we have selected, paste the copy in place. And then there's a little triangle handle right here that you can select and use to rotate that copy of the girt. 
And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the edit handles on either end of it to get it the proper length. And then the last step is to use the point to point move tool to get it into the correct position. So I'm going to use the point to point move tool, select the first point on the skirt, and then select where we're going to move it. And then you can see I did not get that correct, so I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. And there we have that girt looking like the photo of our final wall elevation. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to adjust this bottom girt so that it matches the styling properties of the other girt. When we rebuilt the framing for this wall, this framing rebuilt. So I'm going to double click on this girt, change its thickness to seven and a quarter inches. Click on OK and then use the material eyedropper tool to select the pressure treated material off the post and then apply it to the bottom girt. And then I'm going to select the bottom girt and then use our transform replicate object tool to move it down 3 eighths of an inch like we did earlier. And there we have that bottom girt in position. And at this point, I'm going to proceed to place the remaining windows in the plan and modify the girt framing surrounding the windows. I've proceeded to place the remaining windows in the design and modify the girt framing surrounding the windows. I've also made sure that all the framing members in the design are on the desired layers. For the next part of the design, let's create our roof framing. We're going to start by manually placing our roof trusses and we're going to have a double truss over each post and then we'll come back and automatically build the structural purlins. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the floor plan view and I'm going to switch from the framing floor plan view to the framing roof plan view. Next, I'm going to modify the appearance of what we see displayed on the screen by opening up the active layer display options and then just selecting our dimension string and turning off the display of that layer. Next, I'm going to scroll down to our framing layers and I'm going to turn off the display of the wall girts and the wall trimmers. Next, I'm going to specify the default settings for how the roof trusses should build. So I'm going to go up to the default settings, go down to framing, and then go down to trusses. And here I'm going to specify that the member depth for the cords and the webbing is going to be five and a half inches. And then I'm going to click on OK and then click on Done. Next, to add the roof trusses, I'm going to go up to the roof framing tools, select the roof truss, and then I'm going to come in and then I'm just going to click and drag a roof truss from one end to the other. And you can see how that's starting to come in. And I know I need this at the end of the post here. So I'm going to select the roof truss and then use our point to point move tool to get it so that's at the end of the post. And then I know I need a copy of it residing on the other side of the post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press L to activate our CAD line tool. And then I'm going to drag a line out from the center of the post select the truss and then use our copy reflect about tool to reflect the copy about the line and then I can simply select that line and delete it. Now I know I need copies of these trusses over the other posts in the design so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these trusses and then in the bottom toolbar there's a tool called multiple copy and then I'm going to select the multiple copy interval button and I'm going to specify that I want to place copies every 96 inches apart from each other and then click on OK and then watch what happens when I bring my mouse over those objects. You can see that the icon changes to that multiple copy tool and then when I click and drag down on my screen we'll place copies of those trusses every 96 inches on center which will be the spacing of our posts. And then let's pull our 3D view side by side with our floor plan view and you can see how that's starting to come in. The next thing we need to do is we need to get a truss at the end of the wall here and adjust its properties so that the webbing is running vertically. So in our floor plan view, I'm going to go up to our roof framing tools, select the roof truss, and then click and drag a truss over in this area of the plan. And then I'm going to zoom in and it looks like I got the truss at the end of the post. So with that truss selected, I'm going to open up its specification and then make sure that's marked as an end truss and then click on OK. And you can see how that looks in the 3D view. And then with that truss still selected, I'm just going to create a copy of it. 
and then reflect that copy about the plan. And that's going to complete adding the trusses into the design. For the next part of the roof framing, we're going to automatically add structural purlins between the roof trusses. The first step in automatically creating those structural purlins is modifying the settings for the roof planes. So I'm going to go up to Build, Roof, Build Roof. The first thing I'm going to do is go to Options, and I'm going to change how the eaves cut from being a plumb cut to being a square cut. The next step to adding the structural purlins is to go down to the structure panel. The first thing we need to do is modify the rafter spacing. You can see that the rafter spacing is currently set to every 24 inches on center. I'm going to change this to every 96 inches on center, and what this is going to do is the program is going to go through the design, and every 96 inches on center, it will try to place a rafter. However, if a truss is present, it will not place a rafter. Because our trusses are placed every 96 inches on center, the program won't place a rafter except for at the end of the roof overhang. Next, to add the structural purlins, we're going to go down to the roof layers. If you wanted to add purlins outside of the roof trusses, you can do so through the surface option. But we want to add structural purlins within the roof trusses, so we're going to go down to the structure option and click on edit. Here we're going to make sure that we have the framing layer selected, and we're going to check the box that says include structural purlins, and then we're going to change the thickness to be 5.5 inches, and the width to be 1.5 inches and then click on OK. The next thing we're going to do is uncheck that we want to look out to build and then click on OK. We're going to get a message asking if we want our roof planes to be displayed within our 3D view. I'm going to click on No to this message and then the next thing we need to do is build our roof framing. So I'm going to select our roof planes by holding Control on both of them and then I'm going to select the button in the bottom toolbar that says Build Framing for Selected Objects and that will build the roof framing throughout the roof system and then from here you can select on the individual roof framing members and modify them as you need to. Next, our framing requirements have our post height increased by 5.5 inches and notched 5.5 by 1.5 inches for the trusses to rest. So let's modify the post to meet this requirement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make our floor plan view our main screen and I'm going to switch from our framing roof plan view to our framing floor plan view. Next, I want to select and modify only our posts, so I'm going to make sure that they're the only framing member that we have displayed within our floor plan view. Select all the posts and then increase their height by 5.5 inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the active layer display option. I'm then going to select all the framing layers, turn off the display of them, and then turn on the display of only the posts. So I'm going to start at the bottom here, go to the top, and hold shift to select them all, and then check that I do not want to see any of them displayed. And then I'll come back and then turn on only the wall framing layer. And then next I can do a marquee select and select only those posts. So I'm going to go up to our framing tools, select the general framing tool and then hold shift on my keyboard and then do a marquee select over this area. With those posts selected I'm going to open up their specification and under the length I'm going to add five and a half inches and I'm going to lock the start which will be the bottom of the post and then click on OK and then if we jump back to the 3D view and navigate our view around you can see how the length of those posts increased. You could then proceed to take a cross-section elevation view and notate it similarly to this picture. Additional examples of how you can notate this detail are available by downloading the sample plan from the Chief Architect website. For the next part of the design, we're going to add footings underneath the 4-inch concrete floor and specify that their height should be 48 inches and their diameter should be 24 inches. So I'm going to go back to the design and I'm going to go to our plan view and I'm going to switch from the framing floor plan view to the working plan view. The working plan view is a good plan view for just doing general design work. 
If you were going to be sending plan views to a layout sheet, you would want to create a foundation plan view. We are not going to be creating a layout sheet in this demonstration, but more information on creating custom plan views and layouts is available on the Chief Architect website. The first thing we're going to do is modify the working layer set to make it a little bit easier to place the footings. So I'm going to select our wall, and I'm going to uncheck the display of the wall layers, and I'm going to check walls main layer only. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the display of those wall posts so that we know where to place the footings. So with the framing wall layer selected, I'm just going to check the display of it. And then I'm going to close the active layer display options and then just zoom into this area of the plan. And I'm going to pull my 3D view and floor plan view side by side. And then in the 3D view, just navigate to the back here. And then in the 3D view, let's go ahead and turn on the display of that 4-inch concrete slab by opening up the active layer display options. And that 4-inch concrete slab is going to be on the floor surfaces layer. And you can see how that comes in. And then the next thing we need to do is we're going to go ahead and add a footing. So in the floor plan view, I'm going to go up to our slab tools. And I'm going to go up to the option that says round pair. And then I'm going to come over to the post and then make sure I have it over the post and click once to place it. And you can see how it comes in in both the floor plan view and in the 3D view. You'll notice that in the 3D view it has a dashed line style, which you may want to see it displayed as a solid line style like the other objects. You can change the line style by selecting the footing, opening up the active layer display options, and with the footing selected, down below you can see where it says line style and then you can change this to the solid line style. I'm going to make that same change in the floor plan view just to make it a little bit easier to see. The next thing we're going to do if we take a look at that photo of the final design is that we're going to specify that it's going to start underneath that 4 inch concrete slab, have a height of 48 inches, and be 24 inches in diameter. So in the 3D view, I'm going to double click on the footing. And for the top height, I'm going to specify negative 4 so that it starts underneath the 4-inch concrete slab. And then I'm going to specify the bottom height is going to be at negative 52 inches. So that the total height between these two values is 48 inches. And then I'm going to change the width to be 24 inches. And then click on OK. And you can see how that updates in the plan. From here, I'm going to proceed to manually create copies of this footing and place them underneath the other posts in the design using the copying and pasting methods we've talked about. I've proceeded to place the remaining footings in the design, and I've also placed a footing underneath this small post on the right-hand side of the door. The next thing I need to do, if we take a look at the photo of the finished design, is we need to increase the length of our post. We're going to increase it so that it goes 4 inches through the concrete floor and then another 42 inches into the footing for a total increase of 46 inches. So going back to the floor plan view, I'm going to do a marquee select using the general framing tool and make sure I select all the posts. Next I'm going to open up their specification and then where it says length, I'm going to add 46 inches onto it. But this time I'm going to lock the end, which will lock the top part of the post, and it will add 46 inches onto the bottom. I'm going to click on OK, and then if we go back to the 3D view, we can't see anything since the concrete footings have a solid color. There's a couple of different ways we can temporarily see through the concrete footings so that we can make sure that the posts are correctly positioned in them. The first is we can go up to our camera rendering techniques and switch to the glass house view, which creates a translucent view of the model and allows you to see through objects. Going back to our vector view rendering technique, another way we can make the concrete material translucent is by adjusting the material properties for the concrete. So I'm going to select the Adjust Material Definition tool and then click on the concrete. If I go down to the Properties panel, you can currently see that the material class is a matte material, but if I switch this to a general material, we get a slider for the transparency, and I'm just going to adjust this value to be 35%, and then click on OK. And by doing that, we can now see through the concrete material and see the posts and the footings. 
And you can see how I need to adjust the size of this post to the right of the door. So I'm going to double click on it to open up its specification, make sure the end is locked, and then I'm going to add 22 inches onto the length of it and click on OK. And you can see how that looks in the plan. Adjusting the concrete material transparency is an optional step I took for visualization purposes. If you do not want to see the concrete displayed like this, you can use the Adjust Material Definition tool to remove the concrete transparency. I'm fine with the concrete transparency how it is, so let's go ahead and close the 3D view. And to wrap up this demonstration, let's go ahead and add corner boards to the corners of the design. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into our default settings and specify the size for how I want those corner boards to come in. So in the default settings, I'm going to go to corner trim and then double click on corner boards. And I'm going to specify that the width is going to be five and a half inches and then click on OK and then click on done. I'm next going to get into a 3D view and I'm going to get into the perspective full overview. And then to build those corner boards, I'm going to go up to build trim, auto place corner boards, the program will place those corner boards on every corner in the design. And that's going to conclude this demonstration.